cool stuff's happening. Uh, first off, here is what I think is going to be the final frame-ish. Um, but most importantly, what I've been working on lately is front suspension. So front suspension, this is somewhat similar to how I had it on the old car, just some stuff that's laid out differently. Um, you can see upper control arms, lower control arms. Because this, uh, my front axle is going to be in line with this front control arm, so it's 90 degrees to the travel, it means setting camber adjustment is going to be really easy, right? Because not much is going to change. Um, and then my drag link back here, which will help set caster. Um, and then kind of set that position to make sure everything's where we need it to be. Um, it's kind of it's kind of handy. So uh, so this is kind of what it's going to look like for now. Um, I need a tweak. First off, I like that I drew the front suspension, uh, a left side front suspension, and then I drew a right side spindle. So we'll actually be front steer. So that means the brake caliper mounts can be on the back side. Oops. That's all right. We'll fix that later. Uh, but here is the kind of front suspension setup. So there's some stuff that's drawn in, like this little tiny pencil rod. Um, it's just there to help me visualize stuff. It's obviously not going, it's going to be just a normal um, rod end. And then there's, what is missing right now is the spring will live between, here's the mount, and then here's where it mounts onto the rocker. So what happens is, let me see if I can get a good image here. As the suspension goes up and down and it bounces, I mean, a bump and droop, you can see how that actuates the rocker. And then everything's been drawn, so all the force lines are kind of like in line with where they need to be, so everything's pointing at the right stuff. So now I have the unenviable job of figuring out basically a whole bunch of different like forces. So uh, right now, when this whole system goes into bump, it means that the force is being applied basically like, you know, I'm pulling up on this thing. So whatever the angle is between a vertical line and then this little pencil rod guy, um, that is going to determine basically how much force is being put into this rod. So because some of that bump is going to be basically pulling on the rod and some of it's going to be pulling up on the rod. It's easier to envision down here on the rocker. Um, so on the rocker, let me see if I can get a normal to view on there. So on the rocker, as we pull on this thing, we are not pulling 90 degrees to the rocker. We're pulling at something slightly more than 90, right? We'll call it 100, 105 degrees. So that 105 degree pull is actually not going to put, let's say we're pulling in that rod with 100 pounds of force. It's not actually 100 pounds of force that's actually causing that thing to twist because some of it is being spent um, kind of pulling it against all the hardware and the fixtures and everything. So if we're to pull with 100 pounds here, it's not going to push with 100 pounds there. So that force, that's all based off of torque. Um, that force is pretty simple. It's, uh, uh, it's the radius, right, the length of the lever. Take that times my force that's being pulled or pushed into it, and then I have to figure out the sign of the angle. So just like your old trigonometry classes, um, I need to figure out what that, you know, it's just sine times the angle. So I need to figure out what this line is. So it's easier in vision almost, you know, I always tell people like when you're looking at your wrench or something like that, you know, if you're going to turn on your wrench, I'm going to push 90 degrees to the wrench because that gives me, you know, if I push with 10 pounds here, it's going to give me, you know, if we, if we were measuring this in, you know, inch pounds, that'd be what, if I push with 10 pounds here and I was, well, you know, 10 inches out, right, that would give me 100 inch pounds of torque. If I were five inches out and I pushed with 10 pounds, it'd be 50 inches of torque, inch pounds of torque. If I were to push for some reason at a 45 degree angle, that's basically half because some of that force is going to push the wrench and continue to twist it. Some of that force is going to push the rod into, I mean, the wrench into the bolt. So not all of it is being used to twist that nut. So I have to figure all that out here. So it's not only the input shaft, I like that I'm pointing at the computer instead of using the mouse. I have to figure out this angle, and then there's this angle, and then there's this angle, and then there's this angle that goes down to the spring, and that way I can know exactly, you know, I know that my car is going to put about 200, 220 pounds worth of force when the car is just kind of sitting static on this front wheel. So when it's just sitting there uh, at rest, it's going to be pushing with 200 pounds, and then as we go through a turn and as we go into bump, and this is where the magic happens is, 
how much force? So like at 200 pounds, how much does that squish the spring? And then let's say we jump on the car or we go over a big bump and we now put 400 pounds of force into it. How much will that spring squish? And then how do we get it so that we have kind of our controlled one inch, one and a half inches of travel? Um, make sure that we don't bottom the car out because we don't want to drag the car, but we also want to make sure we have as soft a ride as possible. So got some math to do and I'll make a spreadsheet and let the spreadsheet do all that for me. It should be easier. All right, guys, have a good one.